Hello and welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. I'm your host, Don Allen III, and last week we took a two-dimensional drawing that we made in a $6 app known as Procreate and turned it into this three-dimensional dragon with fire and stars and some kind of scaly looking thing. Now today we're going to continue on with this tutorial series, the Procreate to Cinema 4D series. This drawing on the left of the screen is going to be moved into the three-dimensional world of the Cinema 4D program. And today's specific goal is to take that drawing that we have and turn it into something kind of special. We're going to, we're going to make it into a three-dimensional kind of art. Um, that's a time lapse that you're seeing right now of the Procreate app, which is pretty cool. It records all your brush strokes. Um, we're streaming live to Instagram and we're streaming live to YouTube as we speak. So if you are interested in seeing this in full HD with much better quality in the audio, you can feel free to click the link in the bio at the top of my Instagram page and that will take you to the live stream on YouTube. This is going to be a really fun tutorial and if you're not watching this live with us here, I would encourage you to uh, take a look at the end of this video to see what we get in an hour or less. If you like what we have, then you should stick around and see what it takes to get there. If you don't like it, well then <laughs> don't watch this episode. All right, so let us get started right about now. Welcome, welcome to the show. This is what we worked on last night, was this Cinema 4D scene this guy's running into this cave and then he gets shot back into the space. Maybe some kind of ominous force yanks him back into reality. Um, so we're going to kind of reuse some parts of this, some some parts of this concept in the piece that we're working on right now. Hello, Tecmo. Welcome on the YouTube live chat. Welcome to the show. Uh, so this is going to happen. Oops. So yeah, just uh, for those of you just joining live on YouTube, uh, we're, we're doing this thing where we're going to take this two-dimensional drawing that we made and bring it into Cinema 4D. Today's goal being just to get it to have like a kind of, you know, we're going to sculpt that monster, give it some horns. Uh, it's kind of like deer antlers, I think. And then we're going to just try to put it in some cave with some water, maybe some glowing fire. I don't know exactly yet. We're going we're gonna to experiment. We're going to find out together. Cool. All right, so I'm just doing a quick test right here. This is me. Welcome to the show. This is Creativity with DA3 Live. And uh, let's get started. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste this link to the YouTube page. YouTube link. And then I'll just paste it right here on Instagram. For those of you, uh, Tecmo, I know you're on YouTube right now. Um, feel free to uh, hang tight. If you want to see the old, um, the old one, you're welcome to take a look at the YouTube Heart series. It's currently up, but you have some choices. Where's everybody coming from today? Okay, we are in Cinema 4D. I'm gonna start off a brand new canvas. Ah, good old fresh canvas. Welcome, Edant and Dorian and uh, and Triput. Today we're going to be working in Cinema 4D. If you want to see the full tutorial, you can click the YouTube link in the bio. I also put it in the comments here, but we're live streaming the YouTube right now. Yeah, see, we're, we're live. Live. Okay, let's go back. Cool. <clears throat> so, first things first, we need to bring in that illustration. So I'm going to bring a new plane, rotate the plane. Uh, by holding shift to kind of lock it down in these 10% increments. We'll do, 10, we'll do a 10 degree plane right here. Uh, or I guess it's up 90 degrees. Next, we're going to click on this lower section here. and We're going to bring in our illustration uh, that we did in the Procreate app, which is a free app. No, it's not free. I lied. It's a $6 app on the App Store. All right. Let's find out where we placed that image. I don't see it. See, we got lots of images. Is this it? Nope. Nope, it's not it. Uh, let's see, where did we put that drawing? We need some pictures. Nope, that was last night's uh, work. Let's see. The dragon? No. Hmm. Let me see where I uh, placed that. Give me one second, folks. I will, for those of you on YouTube, I will just uh, play this. This while I'm looking for it. Give me one second. 
we're gonna be making that Cinema 4D uh, creature thing, but I first need to find my reference image that we pulled from the mobile app. And yeah, and Macromedia, thank you for joining us. Tecmo, oops, having some troubles navigating to where that file is. I could have sworn I just brought it in, but it must be hiding somewhere. Nope, that's not it. Um, pictures. How's the audio sounding over there on YouTube, Tecmo? Okay, I found the illustration. Oh, no, I didn't. That's not it. Where is it? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to resend it. Oh, I remember. I put it on Google Drive. I'm silly. Here it is. It's right here. This is the drawing I need. So let's just search for that. Okay. Sorry about that. Wait, we uh, had some issues. I had some issues trying to find out where that file was. Um, but we're good now. So we have it. So I'm going to show this in the Finder. Great, so we got our image, and if we uh, unzip this drive, we should be able to see our file. There it is. Cool, so that's inside of downloads underneath drive download folder. So let's go back into Cinema 4D. Sorry about that inconvenience. And we're gonna go back to load a texture. So I'm just gonna load an image, go to our downloads, and uh, find it. I don't know why it keeps making it disappear. Cool, there it is, hit open, hit yes, great, and then we can drag this texture, and now our creation is in 3D, and you're done. Thank you so much for watching Creativity with, no, I'm just kidding, try put married, I have the same problems all the time, <laughs> yeah, it's the disorganized problem when it comes to files on personal projects. So actually, before we go into the intense sculpting and modeling, one technique we can do if you were in a rush and you just needed basic 3D, you can turn this image into what's called a bump map. And I'll show you how that works. What a bump map does, or what a displacer does, is it changes the geometry of your initial object based off of the light data in the pixels. So for instance, if we made the displacement for this image the exact same image, so I'm going to go back and load it up. So we've got the same image in here. If we load it up, oh, thank you, Tecmo. If we make this image displace, it's going to displace the existing mesh based off of that data, which is really interesting. So um, let me just kind of loosen this up. So we have some options. So that's the you know drawing, and now we can loosen it up and make it spiky. Let's see what it does when we render this out. Ah, nothing. Let me see if we can drag it onto it again. Hmm, nothing's happening. Interesting. That should have actually done a lot. Oh, the, the height of this placement's very low, so we need to increase that. We'll increase it to like 63. And then if we go to our plane, we also need to give it more segments, because if we look right now, it only has about this many segments by hitting the display segment. So if we increase that amount, it'll be able to bend and morph more easily. So let's just do 150 segments by 150 segments because it's a square. You see all those tiny little squares now. It's the grid. The grid. So it's sort of like a height map. Yes, it is exactly. You can treat image any image like a like a height map. So now let's render this frame out. And now you can see we have kind of a three-dimensional uh, depiction of the art. You'll notice the areas that are in highlights will kind of shoot forward, like the eyeballs here. Uh, they shoot forward, and then everything that's in dark kind of shoots backwards. So this is one way you can make a two-dimensional drawing 3D really quickly. It doesn't really look all that great, but it's just a little <laughs> random tip. Uh, I don't plan on doing it for this one, but if you increase the segments, it makes the deformation smoother. So it kind of gives you an idea. You could turn it into like a, you know, a bumpy surface. We can give that a quick render.
render. You see what I mean? So you can make some very, very bizarre art this way pretty quickly. And, and it's real 3D too. Um, this is me posting the beginning stages. Uh, but usually I do all these drawings live on Instagram. So um, I don't usually upload the Procreate illustrations. But I can do that in the future. As of right now, I'll just do the, the live drawings of this uh, on the app. Okay, so we don't need to use that deformer. I'm just going to turn off our displacement tag. That's the, that's the tool that we used right now. So now it's just going to be a regular two-dimensional image. Cool. Um, let's, uh, let's start making that monster. So, for starters, I'm going to put this up high because I want the monster to be below this. That's our Procreate drawing. And you know me, we're gonna start off with a sphere. And let's display our lines. I'm gonna turn these into a tetrahedron so that we get triangles instead of squares to, to work with. Um, I personally prefer them. Uh-oh, how can I see our drawing? Oh, we made so many segments on this. I'm just gonna make this one by one so we can see it again. Ah, yes. Okay. So, a couple of things, we need to make the first, like, the, I guess the face, the face and, and head of this creature, and then the body, and we're going to use the sphere to do that. So let's change our mode from standard into sculpting, so now it brings up all the sculpting tools, and uh, yeah, I think this is, a good, this is a, a good amount of segments to start off with. Let's convert this into an object, and now we can use the grab tools. We can start pulling and pushing on this geometry, but before we do that, you want to make sure that you're linking your symmetry, or linking your pressure, uh, link your symmetry, and I want it to be symmetrical on the X and Y axis. So for those of you just joining on YouTube right now, we are live streaming to YouTube at the link that is in the comments. You can get to that link easier if you want to just click the link in the bio. Okay, so let's make the brush gigantic. Going to the settings and increasing the brush size. It's actually not that big. Let's go. Let's increase it even more. Just holding the bracket symbol to increase the brush size here. Okay, and we just gotta look at our reference image. Sculpting. So you can make a skull head this way. You can you can do all sorts of stuff with this method. Right now I'm just gonna be working on the face. Alright, so this head is a little bit more pointed, so let's just grab a big chunk of the top of the head. Kind of this bulbous head shape. Okay. So we're going to give this character three eyeballs to actually make the head a little bit wider. So we can use the pull tool if we want to just pull on some of the geometry. If I want to pull the nose forward, just get the pull tool on it. Okay. Cool, this roughly, this roughly works. Roughly works. So what I need to do now is make some spaces. We need to subdivide our polygon, subdivide our mesh. So make sure we have it selected and then hit subdivide. This kind of just increases the number of polygons. We'll use the pull tool, but use it holding shift or command and that kind of just pushes it back into the sockets. We'll do one for the forehead as well because it's going to have three eyes. Yep. Okay, just kind of 
kind of pushing in on this geometry. Kind of looks like Spider-Man with the mesh on it right now. I'm going to subdivide this again. And each time you subdivide, your geometry gets smoother, but also gets it involves more computation on your machine. So it's going to usually slow it down slightly every time you subdivide, but the, the result is you'll get more details to work with in your, on your work. Welcome Dan and Street Less Street Lens Studios and Nestor and Justin Pierres 12 and Car Lore Photography. Today we're working on uh, our next episode of our series, which is fun. We, uh, we're taking this drawing that we did inside of Procreate mobile app and turning it into a real 3D model and monster and creature. Um, last week we made this thing with this method. We made this dragon based off of an illustration. Um, and this is Procreate to Cinema 4D for those of you just joining. And today's goal is to get that drawing into a 3D environment. All right. Cool, cool. All right, so just making these places, these sockets for the eyes, we're going to use the grab tool now and just kind of grab the face a little bit. the brush size quite a bit here. Alright, so if I look at this thing, it's a very mysterious face. It doesn't really have an expression. So let's use the smoother tool and smooth out the mouth a little bit so it's just less expression. Some creature. All right, we're gonna use the pull tool and just pull on the geometry around these eyelids a little bit. Okay. Cool. All right, let's make the body of this character. I'm gonna rotate the head forward just a tad. Hey. make the body of this character so to do that we'll go back into our object menu make another sphere make the sphere huge-ish down back might just flatten this uh, the spheres to tad don't want to kind of give it a little bit of a hunchback so kind of this is called blocking and you just put a big shape to generally block out the idea of what you're going for um, same idea as before we're going to use a tetrahedron so that we get triangles instead of the default squares and uh, just like before we're going to hit the transform tool and now we have all of our handy dandy 3d sculpting tools kind of sculpting this body might push its chest in a little bit and maybe make it a little bit taller Okay, roughly speaking, that will work. 
Now, last week, I uh, worked inside of a program, a brand new program that Google makes. Um, I think it's called Blocks. And you can do 3D, sculpt, uh, 3D sculpting and 3D modeling while wearing virtual reality goggles. And so last week, I made this low poly tree. I might want to reuse the trunk of the tree to make the antlers of this character. So let me see if we can find that. Uh, downloads. Oh yeah, and it saves all of them as um, OBJ files. So once you're done with the, uh, once you're done with it, you're able to reuse like just about all of it inside of your other programs. Just want to make sure I have it still. It should be in our downloads folder, OBJ file. See. Oh, there it is. There's the model. So I'm just going to drag this model into the program. Hit OK. Ah, it opened up into a new instance. Uh, I don't want that. Let me see if I can copy this. So I made this tree inside of virtual reality while wearing VR goggles, and this tree was life size when I made it. But I want to reuse the tree trunk to maybe use as the antlers or something. Um, but let's see what's going on. Let's go back to our window, see if I can copy a layer from one window and bring it into the other. Okay, it doesn't let you do that. Oh, it does. Cool. So, for this thing, we don't need all the spheres, so I'm going to get rid of the spheres. I think. Well, at least try. Might not let me. Hmm. Okay, I guess it won't let me tweak that part of it. Yeah, even when I go into object mode, it's still not working. Uh, we can, I guess, just manually delete the sphere things. So right now I'm using the uh, loop looping selection tool to kind of just loop all of this out of here. Let's see. All right, we got lots of things. Sort of select all. This might be the inefficient way of recreating those horns, so I'm actually going to scratch the idea, just make them from scratch in here. What we'll do is we'll start off with the uh, arc tool. Nope, not the arc tool. I meant the pen tool. And we're going to go to a side orthographic view of our creature. So we can kind of see the side of our character's head. And we're going to draw from the inside of the character skull what should be roughly the uh, trajectory of, I don't know what this is. So we're kind of just redrawing the uh, Whatever that uh, thing is. <laughs> the antlers. Alright, so that's exactly two-dimensional, and we know that because if we rotate around it, it's just that two-dimensional drawing that we just did right there. But we can sweep that object with, uh, with a pretty cool effect here, which we'll do shortly. I want to first move individual polygons, or individual points of this uh, shape. If we grab our pen tool again, I think we should be able to use the spline smooth. So you can kind of smooth out certain parts of the spline. We need to get one of these in Cinema or in, in Illustrator. I would love a spline smooth tool. And so we're just smoothing out the spline. It works really nicely. And then we can go back into our sketching brush. Getting how to grab the individual polygons here. Ah, drawing blanks. 
Oh, I remember, we have to go to point selection. There we go. Alright, so with point selection turned on, for those of you just joining, welcome Kish and Ali Ho and Miss Ali Bo. And welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. Today we are drawing, uh, or I guess we're, we're sculpting in 3D some kind of creature monster thing. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna work but we're again at a pretty early stage in that process so right now I'm just kind of moving these different we could use a tree tool now that I think about it we could just use a tree tool and then not give it ah, I wish do that way all right so we got this spline thing now we're gonna sweep that spline with like a hexagon or a polygon side Cool, we got that. Then we go to sweep. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sweep the spline by making it a child with a polygon. Uh, and by default, it puts it in the wrong orientation. It's, uh, it's, it's like on a vertical axis. So we need to either swap the layers around. Cool, so now this is on the right axis. Now we just gotta reduce the size of that polygon radius. There we go. So you can use this method to make like a tree, but in this case, I want to use this method to make antlers. And the sweep is smart enough to change the end growth and uh, the end scale and the rotation. So we can add more deformations this way. So I'm just going to rotate the polygon, increase the end scale, just a tad, and then increase the overall polygon radius. Okay. That works for me. Let me see if I can reduce that end uh, start growth. And we'll just increase the rotations. So I'm going to place this at the base of where I want it to rotate from. And now we have our first antler. Okay, so inside of the sweep, I want to increase the, uh, the radius of that brush and then maybe reduce the sweep uh, end scale. I'm just trying out different settings to see if we can get some better deforming. that it has and this will make the object either smoother or um, or choppier so I'm just going to kind of smooth it out just a little bit more
cool. It works kind of, sort of. All right, uh, let's see if we can merge all this stuff together. So we got the face, let's put the face here and merge these together and group the objects. So we got our face and our sphere head as one. Cool. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, that should work. Okay, and then I guess we can add some. I guess we need to add another character into the scene. So I built a model uh, a couple months ago, and I'm just going to reuse that model and see if we can get them to be into this shape of the person that stands on top of these rocks. Or actually, we should probably add the rocks. So I'm using a plugin uh, called Forester Rock, and it helps generate rocks. <laughs> It's, um, it's a really smart uh, rock generator. So you can go with, in with Forrester Rock and change like the amount of subdivisions that the, that the thing has so you can make it smoother looking rock. You can change how random it is. If you want more striations, you can make it a little bit more squashy. So right now I'm trying to recreate this little stack of rocks. So that's what I'm going to make right here in 3D. Okay, and then let's increase the incline so we can kind of rotate the edges and stuff. Cool, so we got one forest to rock. I'm going to just merge it down and then increase the random seed again. Do a quick render pass to see if this is looking correct. I mean, it looks absolutely silly right now because we're in the early stages. <laughs> but uh, let's see what we can get. Okay. So in the Forester Rock settings, there are some. Uh, we can apply materials to them, and this is really helpful comes with a lot of rock materials and of course you can use your own you can take pictures of rocks and then apply the rocks that you know best to your materials hey what's up mead wave right now we're live streaming to YouTube and Instagram so welcome to the show right now we're just working on recreating this scene we drew this scene in cinema or sorry in uh, procreate oh thank you so much yeah, I'm very happy with the way the dragon came out. It's uh, this is this was last week, so we, so we finished up that dragon. Um, so this week we are back in the tutorial, doing another Procreate to Cinema 4D, and we're just doing the early modeling and sculpting of that scene. Today's goal being just getting it into the 3D spot. Dude, Procreate is so sick! I can't believe it's six dollars though. That's so that's so affordable. And I'll be honest, I, I'll be honest, I think. Uh, I think that Procreate is actually a better tool for painting than Photoshop is, which just blows my mind because it's six dollars. Did you see Spider-Man? I have not seen Spider-Man. Is it good? I haven't seen it. Do you recommend it? So we got these two Forester rocks. Uh, if we grab both of them and then rotate them and then move them straight down, we can kind of recreate the surface that the character is standing on. All right, let me go back into our object mode. Huh, I'm missing an item. Maybe it's standard. Oh, welcome, welcome Nikhil on YouTube. Welcome to the show. We are working on making this guy, making this scene in 3D. That's what we're working on right now. But as you can tell, <laughs> early stages. But that's how these things work. You just gotta start it and just start cranking at it. And then it will get done. All right, let me add some water. So to add the water, I'm just gonna make a plane. And 
and with that plane increase the width quite a bit let's do something like 2500 pixels by 2500 oops so set it to zero two five zero zero <laughs> it is a chubby monster this is gonna be the water that the chubby monster is chilling in rocks just a little bit smaller okay chubby monster all right let's go back into our sphere null and uh, go into our sculpting tag there we go and we're gonna start adding some more subdivisions we got to make this surface rougher This one's gonna just be for um, album artwork. Yeah, don't really have the biggest goal with this one. Kind of got a little break this uh, this this morning, so I wanted to work. I've been meaning to work on this, so now is the time. So we gotta add those bumps on the character's back. These are gonna be the shoulders of whatever this thing is. Kind of just pulling out shoulders, whatever geometry we need. We gotta just make it here. Then we're gonna use the knife tool and just cut some arm spots. Let's use the grab tool and just grab a belly, grab the arms, grab the shoulders. This is, I guess, the neck, the neck of it. <laughs> there was a turtle on a TV show called Life of Rockin' or something like that. It looks like it. <laughs> Life of Rocco. <laughs> Sick. Let me see what that looks like. Let me look him up. Life of Rocco. Oops. Life. Oh, yeah. We're live streaming on YouTube right now. Listening to some lo fi. Uh, what'd you say? It's called Rocco. R O K O. Oh, the Roku? Oh, no, Roku. R O S. <laughs> Roku? <laughs> so it looks like this guy. Was he good in anything? Rocco. Yeah, Not seeing it. Alright, so we're just using the grab tool to kind of make these extra little bumps on the back. And if we reduce the size of the brush, we can do really small details. Cool, let's subdivide. Ooh, subdivisions. Same idea, I'm actually gonna subdivide one more time. That's a lot of subdivisions. We can go in with the pinch tool and start, whoa, wrong tool, pinch tool. Kind of just pinch some of these bits of the body together. Then we can grab parts of the neck. Now we're going to use the inflate tool to give this creature a big old belly. So let's use the inflate tool, grab the brush size, make it larger, and we're just going to inflate the belly. Oh, that's a little bit too much. It's going a little, a little inflate. There we go. Nice.
right. And then we just got to give some a little bit more arm muscle. Okay, cool. Some big turtle rock dude. I guess it's a turtle. We just decided it's a turtle. <laughs> I love it. Nice. All right, so let's look at our reference image. Okay, let's make a, we need to make some more cave-like material. So to do that, I'm thinking we twist the rock. Twist the rock around and suddenly we'll get a cave, who knows? So let's, uh, let's play with the rock a little bit. All right, so we've got the move tool. I'm just going to separate these rocks just a little bit, but then lower them deeper into the water. There we go. And then we're going to duplicate those rocks, bring them up, rotate them together. All right, so we're going to do something like that. Then what we'll do is increase the segments of the rocks somehow. Where's the incline? Oh, that's the rock size. Oh, that's what I was trying to move earlier. Let me grab the rock sizes of these and reduce them quite a bit. Rock size. Oh, that's in the X. That's Y. Oh, cool. Tiny rocks. All right, take care, Mead Wave. Thank you for joining as always. Um, you gotta do the chores. Horns are on point. Thank you, Nick Heel. Forrester's a phenomenal uh, plugin for Cinema 4D. Saves, saves years, <laughs> years of time. Okay, so we got these two rocks here. I need to turn these into something massive. So let's uh let's uh do that. Let's, let's make massive rocks here. Boom! Freaking giant rocks splat in the middle. There's gonna be water in here. Those are gonna be all reflective. It's gonna look sick. Hello, Cena. Welcome back. It's good to have you again. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Welcome to the show. We're live streaming on YouTube right now. If you want to or prefer watching there, I'm just making some rocks for our scene because we got to make these rocks these kind of rocks that uh, uh, circle around and the character and stuff so what I want to do to these rocks is also just twist them around so we can grab the rock and add a twist deformer to the rock see this we can add the twist make the twist a child of the rock and we place the size of the twist deformer in there so we can rotate and twist the rock of whoa um, I actually want the rock to be inside of that box so let's go to our twist deformer and increase the box size so that we can fit the rock inside of the box there we go so now that rock is surrounded by our twist deformer so then we can twist the rock Okay, we're not gonna do it that much, but just a little bit. Yay, Tecmo says they're finally switching to Cinema 4D. Welcome to the party. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love Cinema 4D. Yeah. Ooh. All right, so I'm gonna place this rock here. I think I made it a little bit too wide in this axis. Let's kind of shrink it there. Vertical offset, what is this? Oh, that's cool. 
to make it a little bit more spiky. All right, let's grab our whole Forester rock and just push it back over here. So it looks like the other character, we see a lot less of their body. So what we're gonna do is disperse the sphere and the body of the character in this null object. Where does the body live? Okay, it's in this null as well. So now we can just move the whole creature. Whoa. Oh, that's way creepier. Like it's all low in the water or something. I wouldn't want to see that. Oh, creepy. All right, let's see. I'm starting to get close to this. Being an illustrator and being able to make 3D models seem to go hand in hand. I think it helps a lot to work with illustrations. And if you aren't able to illustrate, to work with illustrators to help conceptualize your 3D stuff. Um, all right, let's put some lights in those in the character's eyeballs, the three eyes. So we hit the light button. There we go. We got a light. We're gonna put the light into the eyeballs of the character. We got three eyes to work with tonight, to morning, to whatever day it is. Let's put one light inside the first part of the eye. Give it a quick render real quick. Okay, and then we're also gonna make sure that this light casts shadows. So we're gonna set our shadows to soft. Uh, Tecmo says, I've been using Autodesk Maya since 2013 release, but now I'm gonna be trying Cinema 4D and see what it has to offer. Ooh, if you are familiar with Maya, you're gonna be so relieved when you work with Cinema 4D because it's not as complicated as Maya is, but um, it's gonna be it's gonna be useful. All right, so we got we put three we put three lights in the character's eyeballs. Whoa, there's light shooting three. Oh, that's their uh, it's the hood, whatever things. Okay, the antlers. Okay, so we kind of got the face in there. Uh, let's make those lights volumetric, shall we? There we go, volumetric light number one. So a volumetric light just means you'll see the volume, you'll see the rays of light kind of leaving the surface. So it kind of makes for a more natural uh, appearing uh, light source. So we're gonna make this one also volumetric and reduce the scale quite a bit. And we'll do the same thing to this last one and also make the light volumetric and then reduce the scale. So now there should be three glowing eyeball lights. Ooh, menacing. Uh, any cartoon on Steven Universe style, built in physical render symmetry as well. Yeah, oh, you're gonna be using Octane Tecmo? That's gonna be so sick. Don, if you do 2D character animation in the next stream, like make any GIF loop, that would be fun. Ooh, that would be fun. I think that's completely doable. Um, I think that's a great idea. I'll try to do that. Thank you, Nikhil, on YouTube for the idea. Um, I'm going to make a new camera real quick so that we can lock this space down. In Cinema 4D, if you make a camera, you can come back to that exact, exact location that you were in when you were viewing it in the viewfinder. But if you turn that off, now you're out of the camera. So you have to make sure you toggle this off and on. So right now we're off the camera. I'll zoom out. And you can see there's a virtual camera that was made right here. Because that's the spot that I'm thinking of posting the image from. But we can use that to our advantage so we can go and build the scene and make little tweaks without losing the position that we liked, the lighting and, and whatnot. Okay. Let's return back to the camera. Give it a quick render pass. All right, I'm also gonna make this material here water. So let's make some water. A quick way of making water in Cinema 4D is to go into your transparency tab. Uh, turn off color, turn off reflection, or actually let's keep reflections on. We go to the transparency tab and we set the refraction preset to water ice. Uh, so now it's gonna refract light like water does. Oh wow, but it's, it's perfectly transparent, which is not gonna help us in this case, so we need to make it a little bit more opaque. 
and maybe give a slight color of this kind of murky green. Let's see what this happens. Hmm. Maybe we'll up the reflection transparency a little bit so that it's not too, too overbearingly green. Uh, any cartoon character in the universe. Thanks, Don. Octane is a great techno. Very fast if you have the proper... Yeah, see, that would be so cool to get that. All right, so we got our water. We have we have somewhat of a scene that's similar to this one. Now we need to add some more, like, mood lights. So what I mean by that is this. We need to first bring these rocks in a little bit closer to our scene, make it a little bit more claustrophobic. So we got these rocks a little bit closer and maybe a little bit lower here. Oh no, I'm just gonna bring that up, bring it forward. The reason why is I wanna put a light that shoots from right about this angle so that we get that side light that we do in the illustrator file or the illustration. See how there's like this yellow glowing light off, off of the camera? We need to make sure that there's space for that light in 3D space. So let's make that light. There we go, we made another light down move it to the side I'm gonna move this light very far away so that it kind of has a lot of time to bounce around and it will also soften the shadow just a tad and with that light if we give it a quick render pass from our camera angle it's a little too strong but we can make it yellow tinted sweet so now we're able to kind of see the character a little bit better I think we should also spend some time doing some texturing work on this creature. So let me save what we have because I just realized we haven't saved once. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, this is uh, cave, swamp, creature, SW, swamp, creature, creature. All right, there we go. We'll save it into that folder there. Give it another quick render pass. All right, so maybe this creature is just not having a good day. We can we can add a little bit of um, movement to the water as well, but um, definitely do some texturing. So I'm thinking, let's use the hair modifier and cover this creature with hair. I think that'd be kind of cool. Some like yeti-looking creature. Uh huh. All right, so we got this thing selected. It's the sphere. Then we're going to go up to simulate hair object, add hair. And my default puts all these hairs all over the scene. So let's give it a quick render. And this is the default. There's, the, there's some issues. The hair falls right through the character, so we'll need to fix that. So the way to do that is we go to our sphere body. And we've got to name this um, body index SD and we need to tell Cinema 4D to not collide with the body. We want the hair to not, or I'm sorry, we want the hair to collide with the body. So, oh, Nikhil says, do you think you can easily do a voiceover for videos, like narrate a story or something? You do a distinct, you do have a distinct voice like Morgan. Wow, Nikhil, that just made my life. <laughs> that is such a kind thing you just said. Thank you. Um, I don't do much voice narration, but I do hire voice artists for projects, uh, for clients and things. But thank you, I will consider being a voice because of you, Nikhil. So what we're gonna do to make the hair collide properly with the body is we need to add what's called a collider tag. So we go to the body and we go to, uh, we go to tags and then we're gonna go to Cinema 4D tags or maybe it might be simulation tags. Let me see. Yeah, so we do limit blah, blah 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 simulation tags, and we gotta tell this that this is a collider body. It's gonna collide. So let's hit the collider body. Let's hit play to make sure it works. Okay, so now that we have a collider body, we need to tell the hair tag to collide with it. So we can go to tags, and there's a whole option called hair tags, and then we do. Uh, 
we do a hair collider. And I think it should work now. Let's just give it a see, a look. We render it out. Nope, it went right through the arm. Let's fix that. Hmm. Uh, hair, 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 hair. How do we fix the hair? We need it to collide with the body. I forgot how to do that. It's been like two months or something. Hairs. All right, let's see. If we have our body, let's see if we can add the object tag called. We'll just add another hair tag and we'll do hair collider. Yes, it worked. All right, so now the hair shouldn't pass through the body as easily. So we'll need to also just kind of boost the strength of the hair. So let's go into the hair options and uh, add some, oh wow, it looks like we have one minute left on the live stream on Instagram. I'm gonna continue the live stream on to YouTube. So if you wanna continue with us, you're welcome to stay. Uh, but the live stream on Instagram will be ending soon, like in probably a minute now. All right, so we got this creature. We need to give it some hair. I'm bummed that it's not colliding properly with the body, but uh, can't win them all. So let's go to our hair tag, go to our count, and we can increase the number of hairs. So right now there's just 5,000 hairs. I'm gonna increase this to something like 20,000. Okay, give it a quick render. Oh, dinner time, all right. Take care, Nikhil. Lunch time, whoa, what happened? Characters, oh, we didn't even let the hair fall. There we go, and let's see what we get. We'll keep working on this, but thank you in the meantime for watching Creativity with DA3 Live. Have a creative and productive day. change the color of the hair of the character this more turquoise and then we can make the hairs a little bit longer or shorter maybe give it a little bit more curls and waves or whatnot
Hello and welcome back to Creativity with DA3 Live. Today we are continuing our work on this rock monster in this swamp-like land. We're going to be adding more hairs, refining the hairs, making it look a little bit creepier. That is the current goal. And that's what we're doing. We're streaming live to YouTube right now as well. Welcome, Redone and Whiskey. Whiskey and Chance, Thermos, Stedit, and Kiss, Kiss Hor Bahavaganashi. Welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. We are live streaming to this link right now on YouTube if you want to join and see this in full HD. Uh huh. All right, let's kind of zoom around our scene. We've got this rock creature thing. Let's bring in our next person. We need to bring in a object. Let's go, let's merge this animation that we made last night. Uh, where is it? There it is. And we'll just import this into here and into the scene. By default, the character is gigantic, but we need to reduce the scale. It looks like they're running away because they're scared of the monster. Which is fair enough to say. Uh huh. Okay, so we're gonna set these all to a null object. So much, old to John. Welcome back. Welcome to the show. We're having a, we're having a great time today. Great, great fun, fun show. Hopefully. Character's trying to run away from the monster, then it gets yanked back by his telekinetic powers. I think we need to close some programs down. This is taking up a lot of memory. See, we want to make sure we can see our character, so I had all the textures set to transparent when we were looking at the bones of the character, but now we're going to take back. Hey, Don, when did you first start doing art like this? Not professional, but just digital art. I would say I started doing digital art uh, in the 90s with Microsoft Paint. Uh, we had the old broken PC, I think it was like Windows 98, Windows 95. Probably Windows 98, uh, one of those two, and uh, it was in the garage that I lived in for a while in my childhood. That's where I learned all this stuff, <laughs> or at least started learning. But um, but yeah, that's where I learned it, and that is when I started doing, I guess, like digital art. But I really have my uh, my dad to thank because my dad noticed when I was a little kid that I enjoyed making digital art with Microsoft Paint. In fact, it would be like the first thing I would want to do when I came back home from school as a kid, I would want to design on it. And then what would happen is uh, he realized that this was like the thing that I love to do. So what he did was instead of 
letting me continue to work on that program, he found a version of Photoshop and said, I want you to keep designing stuff on the computer, but you have to use photo you have to use this program called Photoshop instead. And that was when I was like around like 11 or 12 years old. And that was I didn't realize how much that would change my life for the better. I really owe my dad a lot for that um, for that foresight that he had. Because he doesn't he's not even a designer. He's not like an artist. He's not an artist brain. So he just knew, I guess, or maybe he maybe he made a great guess that Photoshop and learning graphic design would be a useful thing for his kid to learn. And uh, I owe him a lot to that. All right, cool. So this creature's kind of reaching back. All right, the hairs on the creature are really hard to render right now. I think we have too many. So I'm gonna turn off the hair tags for a minute. And then just display our girl shading. Question O says, I've been waiting to get into Simor 4D for a while. Probably check your YouTube later and see if you have more videos on it. Yeah, I definitely have more videos on it. The one that I have most recently is I show you how, I show you every step it takes to make this in Cinema 4D in a four part mini series um, called uh, Procreate to Cinema 4D. So um, this is just part one of that drawing, that creature. But we did last week, we did this dragon. So you can, if it's helpful, you're more than welcome to check that out. All right, I'm gonna go into the rock material and we're gonna add some bumps to the rock. Just something small, something slight, maybe just, uh, where's the texture? Some surfaces of, uh, actually we'll just do regular noise and then reduce the scale quite a bit, like 50%. Okay, we'll do the same thing with this one, add a bump map, add some noise, change it down to 50% on the global scale, there we go. Oh wow, I need to make the bumps much smaller, 50% was not the correct amount. Let's do, let's do 15%. Global scale, 15, or I'll do 20% on this one. dad to thank too he works in the multimedia design industry so finally when i was around third grade he taught me how to use illustrator and photoshop tecmo we have similar families we have similar priorities it's like we're family it's a pleasure to meet you tecmo it's a pleasure to have you here and uh it's always fun to be working in design all right, let's bring the hair tag back on our character and see if we can get that hair under control. So let's just work with the face first. Let's 
So let's give it more hairs and then make the hair shorter. So it's just kind of like a fuzzy face. So I'm going to reduce the length of the hair and then increase the amount of hairs in the face from 5,000 to something around 10,000. Or else do 12,000. Let's do 12,000. And let's go ahead and let it fall down, hit the face. We're going to set the hair to a dynamic. Uh, where is it? There it is, set as dynamic. So now it freezes the hair so that it doesn't have to be worrying about the rendering of that hair anymore. Oh, it's rendering the other one. Thanks. Ooh, this app is called Cinema 4D. It's a 3D design program. Uh, Tecmo says, on YouTube, around a year later, he taught me how to use 3D modeling in an old program, an old program called Lightwave 3D. He taught me simple stuff like how to make a polygon, apply texture, smoothing, transforming. Wow, your dad's great. <laughs> Tecmo then says, eventually he taught me simple video editing, and that's all. I learned color grading, visual effects, music production, and game design all on my own. Tecmo's on Instagram at Macromedia. And... Uh, check out his work as well. Oops. All right, let's bring the hair back in here. Yeah, no problem. Welcome to the show. Right now I'm just trying to fix some of these lights don't seem to be all casting shadows. So if we look at what our goal is, it's to make it similar to that reference image. So we gotta continue up with this. All right, here's a new idea. We're gonna make a portal. We're gonna make a, we're gonna make a portal. What we'll do is we'll use the landscape tool, right? And then what we'll do is we'll kind of extrude some landscape out of this, right? So we got this kind of like funnel. Then we introduce a twist deformer, and we set the twist deformer to be about the size of the landscape. And we know that it is because of this giant box that we just made around our landscape. And then now if we make the twist a child of the landscape, and this is what it means, this is the parent. Oops, let me scroll over here. That's the parent, that's the child, parent, child, parent, child. Now that the child is the twist, we can twist the mountain, creating a vortex. Then we can grab our landscape, rotate it 90 degrees, and then hit the scale tool, oops, the scale tool, which is T, and we can make this vortex send back into space. And then we can make it out of water. All right, let's see what that does. This might take a lot longer to render, but I still have a lot to learn. I'm getting, I'm getting there though. That's what's up, Tecmo. All right, so that vortex didn't pop up too much, so let's change it to maybe a rock material, so it's like a rocky vortex. That might be more aligned with what we're trying to go for. Here. Huh, this one didn't work either. Looks like we're in a cave. Let me see if we can apply this thinner rock material to it. Alright, so now we kind of have this vortex shape. We push it a little bit further behind so that maybe light can scatter through it a little bit easier this time. So I'm putting a light source. Uh, I'm going to put a blue light underneath everything, underneath the whole scene. So let's go to a side orthographic view. And we're going to move a light 
below the entire world that we made. And this light is going to be a bright blue, cyan, kind of neonish blue. And we're also going to make sure that it's casting shadows, plus it's going to be volumetric. So we're going to let these beams of blue light come from beneath the surface. So let's see what that does if we go back to our side, or the graph, or I guess our perspective view. Let's give it a quick render. There we go. Get some blue glowing water. Um, we can see some beams now, so it's like there's some energy in the water. It's always fun. I might reduce the size of the hairs on the character's body. Give him some rocky horns. I want to play some Rust today. Any of you play the game Rust? It's a phenomenal game. It's hilarious too. Alright, so we're going to go to the hair tag on the body. And we're also going to set the hair to dynamics. What this will do is it will freeze the hair. So we go to hair selection. Oh, I mean hair tools. Nope, hair options. No, where is it? Oh, hair mode. There it is. Hair edit set as dynamics. Boom. Now the hair won't move when we render. So this is helpful. Oh, no, it's still moving. Let's fix that. I'm going to select both the hair tags again. Go to simulate, and then we need to, I need to set these as dynamics. I don't want them to move anymore. So let's give it a quick render again. Ooh, this creature is looking spooky. Thank you, Creative Bryant. Here on YouTube, all we can see is the dragon. We're not able to see the actual program. Oh no, I forgot to switch it. Oh no, no. Thank you so much for reminding me. Is there, are you able to see it now? My bad, Tecmo. I appreciate the heads up. I wasn't aware of that. All right, so we've got this character. He's running. He's scared. I mean, what would you do if you saw the... Oh, get yanked back. That's what happens. Flap. So he's running. Oh, no, don't do that. Render. He's running. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you so much, Tecmo. All right, I'm just trying to see how this hair is looking now. Maybe I'll make the, um, Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate the care that that compliments. All right, so we got the rocks here. Let's make sure that our null object is linked together. So we could probably add more hairs to the face. Oh yeah, I'm starting to like it now. It's got that creepy, it's yanking him back with his psychic powers. Uh, maybe the eyes aren't glowing white. Maybe the eyes could glow yellow. So let's give that a uh, try. Yellow. Yellow eye one. Yellow eye two. Let's see what those two eyes look like. Oh, thank you much, so much, Keenan. Also, I love your character design yourself of your of your thumbnail. I like what you did. It's like a total cartoon version of you.
All right, so we're gonna jump back into the sculpting tools. We're using Cinema 4D, and uh, I wanna re-sculpt just part of the face here so that we can kind of accentuate part of the character. So let's go into our sculpting tools by changing our standard layout into sculpting layout. And that brings up all of our sculpting tools here in this side of the panel. So we can zoom in. And uh, I want to kind of just reshape the eyes, maybe make them a little bit smaller or, or bigger. So we can just grab them. We can totally change the facial expression of the character this way. We still have symmetry turned on. So it's going to do whatever we do to both sides, which is cool, if that's your goal. And it's going to just set this back in here kind of deeper, deep in the eye sockets with the grab tool. And then maybe widen this nose part. It's more alien-ish. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Let's give it a quick render. Um, Afa Shadi, I'm, I'm doing, uh, doing well. How are you doing? the pull tool now and just kind of pull on the eyebrows just a tad just to define the face just a little bit better okay let's give it a quick render again okay cool so we're able to see the character a little bit better I'm thinking we should add more hairs to the face and make them smaller so let's select our hair tag. Uh, we only have uh, about 1,000, no sorry, we have 12,000 hairs. Let's up this to like 40,000. So four, zero, one, two, three, 40,000 hairs on the face. What does that do? For those of you just joining right now, we are live streaming to YouTube as we speak. So you can click the link in the bio if you want to see the, the YouTube live stream of this. Or you can stay here. You got you got choices. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Okay, so I think we added too many hairs with 40,000, so I'm just gonna go up to 20,000 hairs on the face. And let's, uh, let's return back to our material editor in the standard Cinema 4D window. So now we're out of the sculpting tools. Just kind of wanted to reshape it a little bit. Oh man, thank you. Thank you for joining us. So what we worked on yesterday, while that's rendering, let me do Command R to get that a render. While it's rendering, what we did yesterday was we uh, worked on this dragon. We made this dragon in this program. Uh, we did all the fire and stuff inside of Photoshop, but the sculpting of the dragon was done in Cinema 4D. And today we're taking our drawing that we did in Procreate and, and moving it into Cinema 4D, creating a 3D representation of the illustration. And that's today's goal, is to you know, recreate the drawing, but in 3D. This one we made last night, like 3 in the morning, so I need to post that. But anyway, we're back to the show. Um, oh, wow. Oh, wow, okay. So we got the waters working out nicely now. Um, we got this blue light source underneath the water creature looks pretty upset that this guy is chilling in his cave space. It happens. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two rocks and reduce the size of the rocks just a little bit. Where's the rock size? There it is. So I'm just going to reduce the rock size. Oh, 
almost tempted to animate this one, but all those hairs are gonna take forever. distinction between the neck and the head of the character. Uh, maybe I'll add some orbs. I'll add some orbs into the face. So what to do, what to do, let's get out of our camera and just put some orbs, or I guess spheres, into the thing. Um, I'll, I'm going to watch the live stream last night, but my, uh, me and my friends went to the arcade called the Game Preserve. It's a place where they have a bunch of old arcade games from the 80s and 90s. That's sick! Which is the original Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Mario Brothers, Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, Burger, Burger Time. Wow. Dude, that sounds like a fun arcade place. Uh, it sounds like you would recommend it. So, thank you for sharing. So we're adding these eyeballs in here now. Um, they kind of cover up the light, so we got to make sure that they're just just behind the light source, or else the eyes won't glow anymore. And with these orbs, I could make them like these black glass balls, which might be kind of cool, like a black glass color. So let's make this a black color, and then go to the reflection channel and make it super duper reflective, and then allow a lot of light to pass through. And then now we got this kind of shiny glass orb. And we can place it in there and see what that looks like. Oh, I don't see anything. What happened? Did we make it too reflective? Reflection and color. Huh. We should be able to see the eyeball. I don't know why that was the case. See if we can push the eye out real quick, see if we can hide the light. Oh wow, so the eyeball is so reflective that it's just, uh, it's, it's not, it's allowing, it's too much. So we need to make the thing roughen. We need to roughen the reflection to scatter the light. There we go. So this should scatter the light a lot more. Let's see if it works a little bit better. Huh, it's still really too reflective. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Tecmo on YouTube says, Tecmo says, it was, and I do, all you have to pay is $15 to get in, and that's all you don't have to pay a quarter to play the games. It's unlimited credits. Wow, that's pretty cool. I think you found a sweet deal. And thank you, Afa Shadi. curious as to why the eyeballs are not uh, being as reflective as I need them to be. Let's see if we turn off reflection channel, will they be black eyeballs? Let's see. Oh yeah, so they're just not showing up. Oh, the hair is in front of the eyeballs. Actually, I don't really understand what's going on. Hang on, I'm getting very confused here. Can these spheres be rendered outside here? Okay, so the spheres do work. I just don't know why they're not rendering inside of the skull of the character. They're just rendering outside of the skull. Yeah, I'm not sure what's that about. Hmm. Oh well. Take the spheres and slowly put them back into the eye sockets of the character until we get this to be fixed. Let me see if we just can render them out even here. Okay, so we can still see the eyeballs. So let's just push them back, back a little bit further. Welcome, Des, Des Falsadia. 
Okay, so now we can see the eyeballs, but I don't want them to be outside of the head of the character. I want them to be closer into the skull. So I'm going to continue to move. So right now it's looking really cartoony, which might be okay, but I want to make these less like cartoons. I mean, ideally they could be right there, but I don't think that's going to work. So let's take these two lights and bring them out closer in front of the character's face. And this guy's running like, no! See if we can get these eyeballs to render nicely. Thank you, Mob Mobinsley. Welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. Today we're working on some monster creations. A rock monster that lives in this this cave, and there's a there's this dude who's being pulled back by the telekinetic powers. <laughs> of the creature. Um, okay, I can barely see the eyeballs in there, so let's just bring the eyes, the, the black part of the eyeballs, we'll bring them forward. So it's these two spheres, and we might as well move the lights that are corresponding to them as well. Let's see if we can slide all of them forward. I might just have to make the eyeballs smaller and move them outside of the head, because I think the hairs and the eyes are getting in the way. Oh, whoa, that's creepy. Oh, wow. That's its own creepiness. Kind of like the creepiness, though. Hmm. It's like a beetle, beetle deer. Beetle deer yeti. Let's make this rock have a little bit finer, finer texture on it. Okay, it's that rock, so I'm going to copy that material over. Okay, so now the rock should have the, both the, the finer material on them. Cool, we got a lot of the hairs of the character now. I kind of like the stringy nature of them. We can make it maybe more clumpy. We can get the hair to, to make more clumps because this character is kind of in water. So it would make more sense if the hair was in clumps. So let's go to our hair material and go to our uh, clump ratio. Turn the clumps on. And then we can make it so that 10% of the hair is in clumps or 13%. And then I want the variation to be like 20%. And each clump can have a radius of maybe 28 centimeters. Let's see what that looks like. It might ruin it, but it might help it. Or it might do nothing at all. <laughs> okay, so they clumped a little bit more. Definitely worked on the face, but not so much in the rest. I'm going to increase the length of the hair on the face by a hair. So let's increase the length. Whoa. Ooh, that might be kind of a cool Oh no, we lost the face and the hair. Alright, so that's too much. We can't make it much more than like 22 centimeters. But we do have a brush, so we can actually brush the 3D hair. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So, what we can do is go to hair tools and grab a brush. And we can brush the hair. 
get the hair out of the eyes. We can also kind of style it differently, kind of get a little bit of waviness here. Cool, so now we can see the face and the hair. Okay, so this creature is creepy, it's good. Good creepy creature. All right, it's time to add some grass and stuff. Or, or like something that, I don't know, makes it more like we're underwater. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Let's save what we got. Uh, we need to add a third eyeball in the middle of the head as well. So we'll just duplicate that sphere and move it up and back into the skull. Okay, we got this rocky creature. The yellow lights are pretty strong, coming from the eyeballs. I'm thinking we can change our camera to a more, uh, more wide lens. That will kind of give more warping, that might be kind of cool. So let's make this maybe a 24 millimeter lens, move it in kind of makes it a little bit more warping. Okay, cool, so this is working. Now we just gotta add some like <clears throat> grass and stuff. Maybe add a tree, like an underwater tree. Might be kind of cool. It's so right now the character is running away, but they can't run fast enough because the telekinetic deer beetle rock monster is gonna get it. <laughs> Maybe I'll lower the intensity of the brightness of the eyeballs. Then we'll see better. So let's reduce the intensity by almost half. Let's see what we got. And then we're also going to reduce the amount of dispersion and roughness of the material so we can lower the roughness so that the light scatters less and makes the balls of the eyes a little bit more glassy, a little bit more sparkly shiny. Maybe we'll just roughen up just a little bit more than that so we just get a little bit higher diffusion, not too much higher. in here now so I'm gonna make a new plane and we're gonna move this plane here actually no let's do a new rock so we'll do our rock creation tool and jump out of the camera here so what we can do is we can add like a, another plate rock something like this to the scene I'm gonna place it way at the bottom of the canvas here rotating the rock and placing it kind of underneath the water. I 
And then with this particular rock, we're going to go into the rock settings and increase the size of it. And then we're going to reduce the Y scale so that it's a little bit flatter than usual. Oops. Reduce the incline, whatnot. So we just have this rock. We want this rock to be below the water. So that's just like an under, under rock, under rock. Cool. So we got this big old rock and it's flat. And let's return to our camera to see what it looks like. Okay. Now what we're going to do to this rock that's different than the other ones is we're going to apply grass and stuff and maybe some like kind of vegetation to it. So I use a plugin uh, called um, I use a plugin called Forester Rock, and it's great. So I'm going to add some floras. We have wheat. We have alpine blue dandelions and all sorts of plants. We have some ferns. I'm going to bring a fern into here. And then what we'll do with the fern is apply it to a multi-cloner. And the multi-cloner will be parented to the rock. Alright, so the fern is getting multi-cloned and the multi-cloner is going to distribute its properties to a rock. Just gonna click that layer. Does it work? Hmm. Or maybe we grab the opposite. So we grab Forester Rock and we make it refer to the fern layer. Might need to place these by hand because for some reason the Forester plugin isn't working right now. Probably because I'm forgetting something. Let me try again. Let's try the Forester multi cloner. We click our multi cloner and we want it to we want it to link to the surface geometry of the rock, but it doesn't like that. This program is called Cinema 4D. Alright, we're going to try a new technique. Instead of using that rock down there, because if we render it out, it's going to be a lot of information. Yeah, so I'm going to take that rock out, the rock on the ground. We're going to go to our fern and move the fern down so it's not on the top of the head of this creature. But it won't let me move the fern. What's going on? Oh, there we go. So we got one fern placed. Great. Not enough. We need to clone this fern. Okay. Let me see if we can apply it to maybe a... Uh, I don't know. Oh, we can do a landscape. Alright, so let's drag the landscape as the multi cloner's destination. That work. Maybe it's the other way around. I'm missing something. Oh, there we go. Distribute to this geometry. My bad. There we go. Now it's going to work. And if we hit distribution points, now we got tons of ferns, way too many, so we need to reduce the amount 
quite a bit actually. It's like 500 in there. Where is the number of ferns? Since this is a dynamic landscape, all the grass will stay attached to our geometry here. So we can maybe take it off and not be a fern, it could be anything we want now. Alright, so we got that taken care of. There's some some plants or something in there. We can move our landscape to now. Cool. Alright, let's bring a tree in. Alright, take care. <laughs> uh, character. Ooh, I like this tree. All right. All right, probably got to wrap this up pretty soon. Maybe we don't need that tree back there, or if we do, we can maybe push it up a little bit closer.
Okay. We got this creature in here now. Let's maybe move this big old boulder. place this gentleman on the ground. Not in the ground, but on the ground. Cool, cool. The swamp monster. That doesn't really look like a swamp tree, though, to be honest.
yeah, so this character is running, but I don't know what he's running to because there's really nowhere for them to go. They're doomed. Damo and Beat Puzzler Luis Castillo. We're live streaming the YouTube right now, but just trying to come up with some ideas for this 3D model. some kind of glow. Let's do a white glow. Thank you so much for watching Creativity with DA3 Live. It's been a pleasure to have you here this day. And this is about wrapping up the tutorial. If you want to see the end or uh, see more, all of this is being live streamed to YouTube as we speak. So you are more than welcome to learn more about this kind of art and 3D stuff there if you're interested. Otherwise, have a creative and productive day.
Well. Alright, so I do still want that top light. I just want it to be much more dim.
Ooh, um, welcome back. Uh, we just kind of moved around a lot of lights in the past, I guess, 30 minutes. So we have a little bit more um, darker vibe. And I'm trying to get a little specular back into the eyeball. So bring this up another light. A light that's just invisible to most objects. Yeah. Doing little render tests. Ooh, bad light. Let me take away that light. some kind of like light beam from the I mean, maybe we need to put some more lights in the eyeballs again we hid them but I guess we can bring them back So I guess we'll just place the lights ourselves.
Uh, maybe we won't do the spotlight. Oh wow, thank you Nikhil. Welcome back. I'm yeah, just trying to finish up some of the lighting and the placement of things. I might make our characters just a little bit bigger because it's kind of tough to see them now.
I think we are good to go and export this guy out into the next program. Just got to see what frame we want to end on. part I actually didn't do in here. I made that character before and did some rigging in the past, so I reused that uh, character movement. So I didn't actually do that in this one today. Okay, I think this is going to work though. Just double checking for any other problems. I think we're good. Uh, let's see. Maybe we want to add ambient. Yeah, it would have it would have been a whole a whole tutorial in and of itself to do the the render the running of the character that would have taken me quite some time to work together. Okay, cool. So this is with ambient occlusion. I actually like it a little bit better. It's just doing a little bit more to the shadows. Cool. All right, let's just double check our render area. Oh, whoa, it's just this tiny amount. Yikes. Uh, let's zoom out a bit. Ah, we need to see more in frame, so I'm actually widen the, la the lens.
I don't like the uh, zoomed in version. I'll, I guess I'll export a square then. this guy out. Let's just do some anti-aliasing. And I just gotta save it to a specific spot. up last night, pretty late last night actually, was this one. I'll show you it in Photoshop. So this is what we made last night. Similar kind of scene of a character stumbling upon something weird in the forest. So it's actually using the same character as this guy and uh, just throwing him into a different environment. In this case, he's running away from some swamp monster. Alright, so it's going to take a little while to export, so I think we might need to end the tutorial. Hey, thanks, Nikhil. care. So that concludes the episode. Um, oh wow, it's rendering now. Ah, now I don't want to conclude. <laughs> wow, it's getting all the hairs on the face of the creature behind him. It's a big creature. All right, I'll catch you later, Tecmo. I hope you will make 2D animation soon. Yeah, I will have to. <laughs> That'll be cool. Um, so, just to kind of wrap up the episode. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, wait, nope, not on the right page to do that. So, thank you so much for watching Creativity with DA3 Live. It's been a pleasure having you. Hopefully, you learned a lot. Again, last week, our goal was to make that dragon character turn it into 3D and compositing. And that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial is take our renders and bring it into Photoshop. To reiterate, our goal was to take our Procreate drawing and move it into Cinema 4D using uh, a couple of hours of time and some ideas from friends. Uh, and again, that was today's goal. So um, yeah, that was what we did. In the next episode, we're going to bring it back and have it be made in Cinema 4D. Well, we already have that now, so we'll just do it in Photoshop. But again, thank you so much for watching Creativity with DA3 Live. To see more content like this, go to the Instagram at Don Allen III or see me on Twitter at Don Allen III. 
And with that said, have a creative and productive day.